Okay, recording is now on. And I'll share the screen. All right, I have emailed you back your scores on the exam and also sent out a video, so you should all have that. And if you have a trouble with that, then let me know. Okay. We're now halfway or slightly even more than halfway through the course. So we've had three exams, we're having six total. Okay, just so to let you know, I am planning to keep the date of the next exam, exam four, Thursday the 8th, but I will highly unlikely keep exam five the way it is. I still have all these buffer days, so to speak. Okay, so let's see, we're now on this side of the paper. So you, you know we're more than halfway when, you know, I passed the halfway part here. Okay, so uh, exams again. This exam was definitely harder. Um, it's not to be a surprise. Trig is always that way. Um, so the first two exams might have been you know, easier. Trig is always that way. It's a, it's a much harder topic. So the next exam is going to be trig, and the exam after that will be a lot of trig. Okay. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is you can drop one exam, but only one. Some of you missed this last, last exam. If you missed it, you can drop one, but only one. Some of you, frankly, didn't do as well. But if you say, oh, man, I did so well in the first test and the second test, and I kind of bombed out on this test, you get to drop one. But it's only one test that you get to drop okay, out of the six. And then there's a final exam after that. Okay, so we're just about halfway or a little bit more than halfway. Okay, so um, we're starting the second half of the class. In fact, I think this is week 10, starting this week, 10 out of 17. Okay, so looking forward to the next exam, okay, which would be what? Chapters seven and eight, and I've already done with chapter seven. Okay, so game plan is pretty much one section a day, eight, one, eight, two, eight, three, eight, four. Okay, then we're off for a week for our spring break. And then the week we come back, we have 8.5 left. If I just literally do one section a day, which I think is okay. But even if I fall behind, I still have all these extra days at the end here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's the way it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to adjust this. So it's basically 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, and there it is. Okay, something else I do need to say is today happens to be another one of those days where I can't stick around that long, so we may end up ending early. All right, so I'm likely not to give you an in-class assignment, um, but just an early and go from there. Okay. All right, and again, I want to publicly thank uh, Mackenzie and Star for helping out uh, many of you for the exam. And I know it helped out quite a few of you. And they will continue to offer the support as uh, necessary. Um, definitely use Star and Mackenzie. They're, they're there to help you guys. If, you know, of course, I'm there to help you too. Um, but um, get extra help. There's also, as I mentioned before, there's a math resource center. Okay. It's a physical location on campus, but you can also get extra help there. Um, I have my office hours, as you know, and so we're here to help you. Okay. All right, so I'll get started with 8.1. We're probably not going to take the entire time. In fact, I pretty much can't end by 1 o'clock, so it'll probably be a little bit before 1 o'clock uh, before we end the class, or maybe a lot before, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get started. Does anybody have any quick questions you want to ask about what's happening from here on out? So again, we're about halfway. You can see, you know, I split the paper in half and we're done with this half. So you, you, we're heading into the home stretch, so to speak. Okay, so this week, again, pretty much 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, one section a day. All right, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. And then a quiz on Thursday, then we're off next week. And then we don't meet again until what, Monday, April the 5th, it looks like, okay? All right, so any questions? Otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we're on 8.1, a little bit more trig, some new stuff, some old stuff. Okay, now, a lot of the stuff we're doing in this section is in radians, page 540. You can tell it's radians when you see pi all over the place, right? <clears throat> so like 11 pi over six, negative pi over six, 13 pi over four, 
right? You know that we're going to be in radiant mode quite a bit. Okay. So a lot of these you're asking for sine and cosine. Okay. For many of these, you should know how to do without a calculator. And then when it tells you to use a calculator, they tell you, and I'll tell you also. Okay. Let's look at some preliminaries that we have here. Okay. We're going to be getting the graphs of the trig functions starting tomorrow. We're not quite there yet. 8.1, we're doing trig functions of real numbers. <clears throat> you see right here. Okay, now this should be considered review. And yeah, you want to start building up your next formula sheet, your next cheat sheet for the next exam, which will be the Friday after we come back from spring break. Okay, we've actually seen this before, but in case you want to put it again, on our unit circle, see that circle there, x squared plus y squared equals one. It's the equation of the unit circle. Where am I on page 532? Okay, the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle, which they've called t. Y is the sine of t, the y coordinate. Tangent is the ratio of y to x. And then, you, of course, the reciprocal is secant, cosecant, cotangent. We've seen that many times before, right? Okay. The reciprocal identities, you've seen these before. So it's up to you if you want to put them on your cheat sheet again. I mean, a lot of you probably already have it memorized, even if I said you could write it down. All right, secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Okay. And tangent, you can also write as sine over cosine, cotangent, you can write as cosine over sine. So that should be old hat for you right now. Here are some new ones that are going to be useful. Pythagorean identities. Now, the first one you've already seen, sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. Okay. They put t. t can be theta or whatever. Okay. That's a direct result of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Tangent squared of t plus 1 equals secant squared of t. Quite often you see the one first. I'm actually more used to having the one first. Okay. Or one plus tangent squared t equals secant squared t. And one plus cotangent squared t is cosecant squared t. Those are fairly easy to prove. I mean, if they were identities, you can just prove them fairly easily. Okay, and I'll go ahead and show you that. So put these on your next formula sheet, the next cheat sheet, 534. Okay, I'll give you a quick explanation on this one as to why it works. Okay, we know in a unit circle, unit circle means x squared plus y squared equals one, right? Well, x is cosine of theta or t. Let's say cosine t. Y is sine of t. So you have cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t is equal to one. And there it is. Both of these are pretty easy to prove if you actually just treat it as an identity. I'll show you how to do one of them. And then I won't show you the other one, but the other one works pretty much identical fashion. Okay. So I'll show you the proof of one plus tangent squared t equals secant squared t. So right now, this is not an actual problem on the homework, but it's a proof of an identity. Okay, so I'll do my split. As I mentioned before, this is how you do proofs in general. Okay, let's change everything to sine and cosine. Secant squared is one over cosine squared t. And tangent squared is sine squared t over cosine squared t. Okay, and one, I can write as one over one. And then a common denominator would be cosine squared of t. So I can multiply top and bottom of this by cosine squared of t, right? So I have cosine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t over cosine squared of t. Okay. And now that I have a common number, I look at the top, I have cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t. Well, we already know that's one. So I have one over cosine squared of t. And there it is. They are identical. Okay. And yeah, similarly, similarly, one plus cotangent squared t equals cosecant squared of t. All 
All right, now we've already seen variations of this. <clears throat> if I subtract cosine squared of t on both sides, you have sine squared of t is one minus cosine squared of t, right? And likewise, if I subtract sine squared of t on both sides, you would have cosine squared of t is one minus sine squared of t. Okay, so for each of these, you could have another way of writing the number one. So if I subtract tangent squared of t, you have one equals secant squared t minus tangent squared t, right? And likewise, if I subtract cotangent squared t on both sides, you have one equals cosecant squared t minus cotangent squared t. Okay, and I'll write those down for you, but they're really the same formulas. So right here, I could say one equals secant squared t minus tangent squared t. So how did I get that? Just subtract tangent squared t on both sides and it looks like this. <clears throat> and by the way, it says t, t can represent any angle. It can be theta, beta, a, b, c, you know, it's the same thing. Okay, and likewise over here, I could say one is also equal to cosecant squared t minus cotangent squared t, like that. Okay, so here are new ways that you can write the number one. So I leave it to you. Do you want to put that in your next cheat sheet? It's up to you. They're just variations of this and this. So it's up to you whether you think you need it or not. Okay, if you say, oh yeah, I know what to do, just subtract that over secant squared minus tangent squared, that's one. Okay, so that'll work. All right. Okay, something else I wanna show you here. Opposite angle identities on a bottom of five, where is it? 537. So these three, put these on your next cheat sheet if you want. Cosine of negative an angle is the same as the cosine of the angle. Sine of negative T is negative sine T. Tangent of negative T is negative tangent T. Okay, and by the way, we had this a long time ago, but by definition, that makes this one even. This one is odd, and this one is odd. Cosine of negative an angle is the same as the cosine of the angle itself, which makes it even. But for sine and tangent, the sine of the negative an angle is the opposite of the sine of t. And likewise, tangent of negative t is negative the tangent of t. So those are negative angle identities. The text calls it opposite angle. Other books call it the negative angle identity. So you might hear me say negative angle identities. Okay, and those are actually pretty easy to show also. So I'll give you a justification of that. All right, they made this angle in the first quadrant. It doesn't have to be, but it makes it convenient. Okay, here's angle T, here's angle negative T, right? <clears throat> Okay, cosine, cosine means the X coordinate. So if you look at the X coordinate of T and negative T, it's the same, right? I move the exact value to the right for both this one and this one, okay. which means the cosine of negative T is the same as the cosine of T. How about sine of negative T? That means the Y coordinate. How does this Y coordinate compared with this y coordinate, where they're opposites, right? This one's positive, this one's negative. So that tells me the sine of negative t is the negative of sine of t. Then for the tangent, we can just use a definition, sine over cosine. <laughs> so sine of negative t, we now know is negative sine of t. Cosine of negative t, we now know is the same as the cosine of t. So you end up with negative the tangent of t. Okay, so that's just a little mini proof of these three over here. Okay, so again, put these on your cheat sheet if you wish. Okay, and then finally, before we get started, <clears throat> on page 539, periodicity of sine and cosine. Okay, so two pi, we know is one revolution, 360 degrees, okay? So let's say I have this angle, 
I go around another 360 degrees or two pi, well, I still land there. And I can do it again, another two pi, and another two pi. And I can go backwards two pi and keep going backward as much as I want. I land in the same spot, okay? So that means the sine of t plus two pi is the same as the sine of t. And the cosine of t plus two pi is also the cosine of t. In fact, you can keep going around as many times as you want. Okay, so it's actually better not to write this one down. Okay, if you already wrote it down, sorry. But it's better not to write this two down. The more general one is this one. Okay, so this one you want to put in your cheat sheet. And where is it? It's on page 539. Sine of t plus 2k pi equals sine of t, where k is an integer. Cosine of t plus 2k pi is equal to cosine of t. Okay, and you say, what's this 2k pi stuff? Okay, k is an integer. <clears throat> Integers are zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, like that. Okay, if I plug in zero, then of course it's sine of t. If I plug in one, I have two pi. That's the same as that one up there. If I plug in two, that's four pi, that's going around twice. So if I land in a spot, I go around two times, four pi radians, I land in the same spot, so sine of t. If k is three, then you're adding six pi, you're going around three times. Right? So imagine you're asking for the sine of this t, then you say sine of t plus six pi. Well, if I go around once, that's two pi, go around again, that's four pi, go around with six pi, right? that lands me in the same spot. So you can obviously keep doing that for any positive value, and it also works for negative values. So suppose I subtract two pi. So you have an angle theta. Let's pretend it's, I don't know, pi over four. And then it says minus two pi. But well, then you're going back one revolution, but you still land in the same spot. And you can go back four pi and six pi and so on. Okay. So that's why in general, these two you want. Sine of t plus two k pi equals sine of t. Cosine of t plus two k pi. Is cosine t. Okay. All right. So I think we're ready to start some problems. Okay. So our assignment was 1 to 51 odd. Okay. So again, let me show it to you for those of you who don't have the book and don't plan on getting it. Show you that and that and that. And then here. Again, so yes, I know I'm going fast, but you can always look at the video and Stop the video, go forward or backward as you wish. And how high did we go, 51? Okay, so that should pretty much do it. All right, so problem number one on page 540. As for the cosine of 11 pi over 6, all right, where is 11 pi over 6? Now, I showed you a technique before for where 11 pi over 6 is, but remember, you can always play the game of switching over to the degrees. 11 pi over 6, I want the pi's to cancel out, so I want 180 degrees over pi radians. Remember, this is radians. Pi's cancel. 180 divided by 6 is 30. And 30 times 11 is 330 degrees. Okay, so that's almost one full revolution. Right? If I go all the way around, it's 360. I just back up 30 degrees. And it's 330 degrees. Just remember the trick I showed you, either the X or the Y coordinate is halfway over, but I didn't draw it very well. It almost looks like this point's further to the left than this point, but it's not supposed to be. But it looks like the Y coordinate is halfway across the circle, right? So I put a half here. One half is always paired with what? Do you remember? Radical three over two. 
and I'm in quadrant four. Quadrant four, X is positive, Y is negative. All right, so cosine of 11 pi over six, X coordinate, radical three over two. Sine of 11 pi over six, Y coordinate, negative a half. I know I'm going out of order here, but I'm not sure why the author did that. I thought it'd be easy to go A to do, you know, the same angles. And then the authors like to do the negatives after that. So I just did A and C, I guess. This is A and C. And then B and D ask for a negative 11 pi over six. negative 11 pi over six. Okay, so negative 11 pi over six, I do the same thing except go the other way around. So that'll land me in the same spot as 30 degrees, doesn't it? That lands me here. Negative 11 pi over six. Whoops, negative 11 pi over six. I'm in the first quadrant. So radical three over two, one half, right? So cosine X coordinate, radical three over two. Sine Y coordinate, one half. Okay. So yeah, the authors seem to like to do that kind of stuff a lot. So there we go. All right, so let me do one with uh, ones a little bit harder because they give us weirder stuff. Secant, number seven, secant, tangent, cosecant, cotangent, stuff like that. Okay, so I see five pi over three. Five pi over three. Now, I could use the unit circle like before, but again, let me do the trick of changing this directly to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi radians. You're always allowed to do that. Cancel, cancel. 180 divided by three is 60. 60 times five is 300 degrees. Okay, so I am once again in quadrant number four. Right? So 90, 180, 270, 300 would be something like that. Okay. which looks halfway, the X or the Y? Looks like X, so halfway over. And one half is always paired with radical three over two. I'm in quadrant number four once again, so negative. Okay, so A, secant. Secant five pi over three. C gets the reciprocal of V, cosine. So I flip the X coordinate, one divided by one half, which is two. Remember if it says one divided by something, it's the same thing as reciprocal. And the other one, it says five pi over three is letter C, tangent, five pi over three. So that's y over x, right? y over x or sine over cosine. Okay, so y negative radical three over two divided by x, which is a half, cancel the twos, negative radical three. So that was A and C. And then once again, B and D, they do negative five pi over three. So negative five pi over three, instead of starting up, I start down. So that would land me over here, wouldn't it? Like that, negative five pi over three. I'm in the first quadrant. So I just copy these, but make them positive. So one half 
radical three over two. All right, so now I'll go back and do B, which asks for cosecant negative five pi over three. So cosecant is one over the sine. So reciprocal of the y coordinate. The y coordinate was radical three over two. Reciprocal of radical three over two is two over radical three. And again, you don't have to bother rationalizing the nominal. That's okay. Okay, and then D, cotangent, negative five pi over three. Well, tangent is y over x. So cotangent is x over y or cosine over sine. All right, so x over y, that divided by that. One half divided by radical three over two. We know the trick of canceling out the twos, so one over radical three. And that's my answer for that. Okay. All right. Okay, what do they want for something like number nine? List four positive real number values of t for which cosine of t is zero. List four negative real number values of t for which cosine of t is zero. Hmm. Cosine of the angle is zero. X coordinate. Here and here, X coordinate is zero. <laughs> okay. Well, four positive. That's pi over two. Three pi over two. And keep going, by the way, there's another way you can count. Pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two. Four pi over two is the same as two pi, right? Five pi over two, six pi over two, seven pi over two. There it is. They ask for four negatives. Negative pi over two. Negative two pi over two. Negative three pi over two. Negative four pi over two. Negative five. You can just copy all these and put a minus sign in front of them. Right? Negative pi over two. Negative three pi over two. Negative five pi over two. Negative seven pi over two. Right? You're asking for four positive angles and four negative angles where the cosine is zero, x coordinate is zero. So 90 degrees, 270, which in radians is pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two, and then the negatives also. Okay. All right, so that's all. Okay, 13 and 11, 13 says use a calculator. You really shouldn't have to use a calculator for that. You have to unit circle. So how about I do 11? A, 2.06, value the six trig functions using the given real number input. Round to two decimal places, okay. okay. 11 A, I'll get my calculator. So this one has to be done in a calculator. You can't really do it otherwise. Make sure I'm in radian mode. In radian mode, okay? So 
sine of 2.06, cosine 2.06, tangent 2.06, And yeah, I'm gonna need the reciprocal, so I'll flip them right away. So reciprocal of the sine is cosecant. So it's better if I just keep these and then pair them that way. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. And tangent and cotangent. Now, your calculator has sine, cosine, tangent. You don't have a button for secant, cosecant, and cotangent, but you don't need it. Just take the reciprocal of these guys. Right. All right, so sine, where am I? Sine 2.06. I can type it right. Point eight eight. It said the two decimal places, right? I know I just did the reciprocal of that. 1.13. Right. That's all. And cosine 2.06, negative 0.47, round it off. And reciprocal of that, negative 2.13. And then tangent 2.06, 10. Again, some of you, your calculator automatically comes up with the left paren, right? Does your calculator go like that? If it does, then you close it with the right paren. So 2.06, just close it like that. Negative 1.88, round it off, right? And then take the reciprocal. If you want to know how I do the reciprocal quickly, I raise it to the negative one power. Raising something to the negative one means reciprocal. Negative 0.53. All right. Part B, they give you the negative of the angle. Now, they don't want you to punch in your calculator all together for this, but let me just go ahead and write it. Sine of negative 2.06, cosine. I'm doing the same thing as over here, except they're all negative 2.06. 10, negative 2.06, cosecant, negative 2.06, secant, negative 2.06, Cotangent negative 2.06. If you can't read these, they're all 2.06, sorry. Okay, so oh man, do I have to type this all in again? No, just use your negative angle identities. Page 537, use these guys. Cosine of negative an angle is the same as the cosine of the angle. Sine and tangent are the opposite signs, S-I-G-N. So for this one, I just change the sign. Negative 0 0.88. So therefore the reciprocal is automatically negative 1.13. See what's happening? Cosine is the same. Cosine of an angle, cosine negative angle. So I just copy negative 0.47 and negative 2.13. And tangent of negative angle is the opposite of the tangent of the angle. So that was negative. That means I make this a positive 1.88 and a positive 0.53. Okay, so that's the way that goes. All right. Okay, then they want you to verify the identity 
by plugging in for part C, use your calculator. All right, so they're all similar. Let me choose one of the harder ones. 17 looks a little bit harder. Yeah, so maybe I'll show you. But 15, 17, 19, 21, they're similar. I'll do 17 for you, okay? Now in the book, they put cotangent squared plus one. I like the one first. I like numbers first, but it's the same thing. So A, when negative pi over six. So negative pi over six, that's negative 30 degrees, something like that. The y coordinate is halfway across. So one half there is always paired with radical three over two. And once again, I'm in quadrant four, so negative. All right, so cotangent is x over y. So radical three over two divided by negative one half which is negative radical three. Cosecant is one divided by y, the reciprocal of the sine. So it's one divided by negative one half, which is negative two. All right, plug each of these in and see if it works. One plus cotangent squared t is equal to cosecant squared t. Is it true? One plus cotangent was negative radical three squared. Is that equal to negative two squared? And yes, indeed, that does work. One plus three equals four. So it certainly checks. All right, so you do the same kind of thing for B, seven pi over four. That one's gonna be radical two over two for both of them. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I'll just tell you that for part B, I'll sneak it in here. For B, seven pi over four is right there. Okay, this is pi over four, 45 degrees. Pi over four, two pi over four, three, four, five, six, seven pi over four. Okay, both X and Y are negative radical two over two. Right? Negative radical two over two, negative radical two over two. Raise that up there. Okay. Negative radical two over two, negative radical two over two, if you can't see that. Right? Yeah, C is actually harder because you have to use your calculator. So what funny angle did they give me for C? 0 0.12. All right. Well, one plus cotangent squared 0 0.12 is one plus one over tangent squared of 0 0.12. Okay, uh, this calculator is fancy enough that you can do it all in one fell swoop. I think we can do that. Okay, make sure that I'm in radians. Yes, I am. So one plus one divided by parentheses 10.12 squared, one plus one divided by tangent of 0.12 squared, 69.7787, something like that. And then cosecant squared, 
0 0.12 is one divided by sine squared of 0 0.12 squared to the equal. So I'll go one divided by parentheses sine of 0 0.12 quantity squared. Exactly the same. 69.77873997765 or whatever. 69.7787 and so forth. Okay. All right, so that's how you do uh, 15 through 21. Okay, what time is it? It's almost time to break. All right, how do you do 23 to 29? Show that the equation is not an identity by evaluating both sides using the given value of t and noting that the results are unequal. Okay, so in other words, sometimes students come up with things to think that, you know, something's going to be equal or something's not equal. Okay, can you show that it's true or not true? Then we can just plug it in and see what happens. So let's see, 23. Cosine of 2t equals 2 cosine t. T e equals pi over six. So is this an identity, right? It might seem plausible. Oh yeah, just factor the two out. Is that allowed or it's not allowed? Well, let's find out. Okay. So let me draw my unit circle. Here's pi over six, 30 degrees. Double it as pi over three. So we've already played this game before. This is radical three over two, one half. And this is reversed, one half radical three over two. So we're asking is the cosine of twice the angle, cosine of pi over three equal to twice as big as the cosine of pi over six. So cosine of pi over three x coordinate is one half equals two times cosine of pi over six radical three over two. Certainly not. There's no way they're the same, right? This is one half. That's not two times radical three over two. Okay, so they're just trying to say this is not an identity. It doesn't work. All right, show you one more of this type of problem and then maybe we'll go ahead and break. Okay, now, uh, stuff like 25 and 27, you've tackled that many times over with sine and cosine, right? If they give you the sine, you can figure out the cosine. If they give you the cosine, you can figure out the sine. Okay, what happens if they give you something like tangent? So I'll do 29 and maybe we'll break after that. Okay. So 29, please. It says tangent alpha equals 12 fifths. Cosine is positive. Find secant, cosecant. Okay, basically, just find everything. Okay, just fill out the chart as we normally do with everything that we need. Okay, so what quadrant am I in? Cosine is positive, tangent is also positive. That automatically makes me quadrant one, right? They're all positive. <clears throat> all right, to do this, I'm gonna use identity one plus tangent squared alpha equals secant squared alpha. Okay, so one plus 12 over five squared equals secant squared alpha, one plus 144 over 25 equals secant squared alpha. One is like 25 over 25, 25 plus 144, 169 over 25 equals secant squared alpha. Take the square root, I'm in quadrant one. So secant 
alpha is equal to 13 over five. Flip it, cosine alpha is five over 13. Okay, once I have cosine, I can figure out the sine, but I can also do this. Tangent alpha is sine alpha over cosine alpha. I now know cosine alpha and also tangent alpha, right? So I can just multiply both sides by cosine alpha, right? So sine alpha is tan alpha cosine alpha. Because so tangent they told me was 12 over five. And cosine I now know is five over 13. Cancel, cancel. So 12 over 13, okay. So I have everything now. So make my chart. Sine alpha is 12 thirteenths. Cosine alpha was what? Five over 13. Tangent alpha was, where'd it go? I lost it. 12 over five. Okay, and flip, 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 right? Cosecant alpha is 13 over 12. Usually once you get to this stage, this is a piece of cake, right? Secant alpha is 13 over five and cotangent alpha is five over 12. And that's that. Okay. So we'll break. And let me just do my quick focusing thing and for everything on this side in case it will focus. Yeah, maybe I didn't do it over here too. So the back side. Run through it quickly. All right, so hopefully that's readable. Okay, <coughs> okay, break until 1210 as usual.
All right, folks, let's continue on. Uh, so I'll do some more problems. We'll likely not go the entire time, of course. In fact, we'll, the second half will be much, much shorter than we'll just call it a day. Um, so we are right over here, right? So I've already done a bunch. I'll do a bunch more and then that's it. And then uh, we're aiming for the exam, the Friday we come back from our spring break. Okay, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to start preparing now, you know, your next cheat sheet. <clears throat> We've already done chapter seven. And so everything we need for chapter eight. Okay, and again, please uh, use uh, Mackenzie and Star as a reference. If you need them for extra help, please do so. <clears throat> um, it's up to you, you know, it, it's hard to tell people to study over the spring break. I know everybody wants a break, including myself. So, you know, but I guess if you want to make use of the time during the spring break to study, go ahead. But if not, I think you, you can survive if you just faithfully study that you need to this week. And then, you know, the week that we come back, do likewise. And hopefully you're still going to be okay. All right. All right, so do some of these problems at the end. Okay, so a little bit weird, questions like 31 and 33. So I'll do one of those. 33 looks worse. Let me do that one. They're kind of setting you up for calculus, which is what pre-calculus is all about. You'll see expressions like that in calculus. Okay, make the substitution five secant theta and show that the result is equal to something. Okay, so what are they talking about? All right, so you're given one over u squared minus 25 to the three halves power and make a substitution, it says, that u equal five secant theta for whatever reason. Okay. So just plug that in. So I have one over five secant theta squared, that's gonna be five squared is 25, 25, secant squared theta minus 25 to the three halves power, factor out a 25, secant squared theta minus one to the three halves power. And there it is, secant squared theta minus one is tangent squared theta. So you got it here somewhere. Right. If I subtract one, I get tangent squared theta. Right. One plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So secant squared minus one is tangent squared. Okay, and then 25, I can even write it as five squared. Five squared tangent squared theta to the three halves. The reason why I wanna write it like that is because when you raise something to the one half, it means square root. The square root of this is just gonna be five tangent theta. Like that. Okay, that's all. Then I cube it. So one over 125. Five cubed is 125. Five times five times five. Tangent cubed theta. And that's my answer. So it's a little bit weird problem, but that's where that comes out. Well, in the book, they say write it as cotangent cubed. Well, reciprocal of tangent cubed is cotangent cubed. So one more small step. 
reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So reciprocal of tangent cubed is cotangent cubed. So just put it like that, they say, and that's about it. Okay. Thirty-five. One over radical u squared plus seven. They say let u equal square root of seven tangent theta. In other words, plug this right there. So I'm going to have one over. Let's square this. What's the square root of seven squared? Seven. And tangent squared is tangent squared. Factor out to seven. Seven times tangent squared theta plus one. And there it is. This is secant squared theta. Okay, so I'll put one over radical seven secant squared theta. One over radical seven, leave it the same, but this reciprocal, sorry, the square root of secant squared is just secant if I'm in quadrant one. And reciprocal of the secant is the cosine. So cosine theta over radical seven. And that's my final answer, looks like. Okay. All right, then we have some problems involving the negative angle identities. 37. Sine of T is two thirds. Sine of negative T. All right, so the only one that doesn't change sine of the big three are is cosine. Cosine, sine, and tangent. <clears throat> Cosine of negative an angle is the same as the cosine of the angle, but sine and tangent reverse the symbol. Yeah. So sine reverse the symbol, negative two thirds. That's all. B, sine of phi is the Greek letter phi, or sometimes phi, is negative one fourth. What is the sign of negative phi? Same thing, just change the sign, S I G N, one fourth. C and D say cosine which means you just keep the same thing. See, cosine of S is one fifth. So cosine of negative S, still one fifth. Just keep it the same. For D, they say cosine of S is negative one fifth. Hmm. Not much of a difference. Cosine of negative S, again, keep it the same, negative one fifth. That's all there is to it. All right. <laughs> That's how to do those. Okay, then something like 41, use the identities of the periodicity of sine and cosine. Cosine of T plus two pi K is the same as cosine of T. 
sine of t plus two pi k equals sine of t. Again, that thing just means you're going around a circle and landing at the same spot, which essentially means just ignore the extra stuff. Okay, I'll show you what that means. 41. Cosine of pi over four plus two pi. Two pi means you're going all the way around a circle once. Same as the cosine of pi over four. Radical two over two. Pi over four is 45 degrees. This is pi over four. If I add two pi, it means I'm going all the way around once and landing at the same spot. Radical two over two. Which basically means the shortcut is just throw out whatever you see over here if it's a multiple of two pi. Sine of pi over two minus six pi. That means go backwards three revolutions. It's the same as a sine of pi over two. Pi over two is 90 degrees right here. Sine asks for the y coordinate. What's the y coordinate here? One. Here's pi over two. Where's pi over two minus six pi? I go here and then I go back one, two, three. Oh, well, you land in the same spot. So it's still going to be one. Okay. And then letter C. I'm sorry, I just did C. I got the numbering wrong. I was looking left to right instead of up and down. I just did C, sorry. So now I'll do B. Sign of pi over three plus two pi. You add one revolution to pi over three. Same as the sign of pi over three. So pi over three, 60 degrees. Does X or Y look like it's halfway across? Looks like X is. So if one of the numbers is a half, the other is automatically radical three over two. Sign of an angle asks for the y coordinate, radical three over two. Pi over three, 60 degrees. Pi over three plus two pi, keep going another revolution, another 360, well, you're gonna land in the same spot. So it's still radical three over two, okay. All right, that's that. Now, 43 and 45, very similar. I'll just do one of them for you, 43. Sine squared T plus cosine squared T divided by Tangent squared t plus one. No. Sine squared t plus cosine squared t is one. Tangent squared t plus one. Secant squared t. And reciprocal of the secant is cosine, so reciprocal of secant squared is cosine squared. There we go. All right, folks, all we have left are some identities and then I'll be done. So I'll be done in a few minutes.
prove the equations are identities. Remember the idea of the identity? Prove the left side and the right side are the same. So normally you would draw that impenetrable barrier, so to speak, we have there. A couple of those. 47. Cosecant T equals sine of T plus cosine or cotangent cosine. Hmm. Draw my barrier. Well, one thing we can always do is change everything to sine and cosine. One over sine t, maybe that's it for that one. Sine t plus cotangent cosine over sine times another cosine. Common denominator. Sine t over sine t. So I now have a common denominator of sine t. The top is sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is one. So I have it, one over sine t. And there it is, they match. Okay, uh, just one more maybe, and that's about it, and we're finished. Uh, how about I try what, 49? I may be painting myself into a corner here. I'm not sure I have enough space to do this one. One over one plus secant t. I'm gonna leave a space here. One over one minus secant t, leave a space, equals negative two cotangent squared. Oh, they have s, sorry. One over one plus secant s, one over one minus secant s, and these should be s's. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply this side by that and that side by that. So one minus secant S, one minus secant S, one plus secant S, one plus secant S. One minus secant S over one minus secant S, one plus secant S over one plus secant S. And maybe this side just changed the sine and cosine. Maybe that's about it. So negative two cosine squared S over sine squared S. All right, so I have a common denominator, one plus secant S, one minus secant S. That's like A plus B, A minus B. So that's one minus secant squared S. One times that is that, one times that is that. So one minus secant S plus one minus secant S. Cancel, cancel. Two over. Okay, now what do I want to do with this? One minus secant squared S. Let's use one of our identities. 
So I have an identity involving secant squared and one. Well, secant squared is one plus tangent squared. One plus tangent squared, secant squared. One minus one plus tangent squared s. And yeah, these guys just cancel out. One minus one, I'll have a cancellation there. So two over negative tangent squared s. And actually come to think of it, I just put that in numerator and I already have that, so we're done. So negative two cotangent squared s. So it turns out it to be better not to have even made that step, but I got them to match. These two here do match. So we're good. Okay, folks, we're done. Uh, I'm gonna do my focus thing. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or put in a chat. Otherwise, we're gonna call it a day. Okay, so let me go back and let's see. I think I was already on this page. So I'll just do my focusing thing here. Go on. So reminder, we're aiming for the next exam to be the Friday, uh, Thursday after we come back from spring break. Okay. So this particular Thursday, we'll just have a quiz as normal and then enjoy your week off. But we're now just about past the halfway point. We just passed a slightly more than halfway through the class. So we're beginning the second half. Remember, you get to drop one exam. I sent the video on the exam. You can look at the video and I sent back each of you individually your test score. So you should have that also. Okay. All right. That'll do it for today, folks. Any other questions? Otherwise, that's it. All right, I don't see anything or hear anything, so let's call it a day. All right, everybody, have a good day. We'll see everybody next time. Okay. All right, bye, everybody.